Another YouTube land, Danny from Geekcast Radio, doing another graphic thoughts video. This is where I go through some of my recent graphic novels I've been reading, uh, give you my thoughts and opinions on them. I do avoid spoilers. If you've not read any of these books, don't worry. I'll give a general synopsis and what my what I thought of them. If they're books, I think you should be looking out for. And this is a really strong week for me when it comes to graphic novels. Uh, this is kind of reading season in a way for me. You know, it's getting a little colder out, uh, so sometimes it's just kind of nice, especially in a rainy fall evening, to to read some great comics and some great graphic novels. And luckily, uh, as years winding down there's a lot available to read it's really i have a huge stack of books that i still need to get to uh, luckily i was able to read four of them which i'll talk about today and i'll start with this one which is probably what i was the most anticipating out of all the books i've read today i usually do these in order of what i've liked the most the least to the most honestly this time around they're all type of even they're all kind of good books uh, but this is come again by nate powell and that may, name may sound familiar for many people because he was part of the march trilogy uh that depicted the life of John Lewis uh, well, up to this point, uh, th uh, the, th the trilogy, the three books that came out, I think the last one came out two years ago at this moment in time, and now he is uh, writing his own single book by himself, Come Again, um, and, you know, I love the March books, I, you know, they're, to me they are worth, uh, they are up to the hype <laughs> that they've been given, all those awards, I think it's really worthy of that, and I was, you know, curious to see how Nate Powell would do just kind of writing and constructing his own story, I'll, you know, doing that autobiography or biography of, of John Lewis. It's kind of a combination of both since it was partially John Lewis writing and partially him. He had a great story to work with and it was depicted on the page really well. Well, now when you're constructing your own story, how does that work out? And I, I ended up really, I did really like this, although I did kind of go back and forth with it. When I first started reading it, at first it felt like a, a book that the, the narrative itself was at odds with the tone that I was setting. Um, if the, the tone felt very uh, atmospheric to more of a, like a horror type of book, even the, the cover, partially I think even because of this cover, and as the story's going on, it's more of a melodrama about these family, this family that's living in this kind of hippie commune and they kind of live off the land and but there's a lot of dynamics within that group a lot of secrets that they're holding some relationship issues it's kind of like this is odd this feels at odds with one another this doesn't feel like uh, this dramatic tale that there should be some more tension here and it takes some time but eventually it does get there and i don't want to spoil it but basically there is a supernatural element to this it's very it's it's, it's a little subtle in the sense of it's not like a ghost story or anything of that nature, but it does delve into the supernatural and it gets really into that. It, that is kind of the supernatural element works as kind of the metaphor of these secrets that that, that are being held and kind of the reflection of them as well. Um, and as it was going on, I was able to buy in more and more. And by the end, there is a pretty strong emotional co conflict uh, that that is at play here. Um, one thing I did really like about this book too is that. The lettering, uh, which is not something I typically notice, honestly, and usually that's what you want with lettering, you don't want to notice it, plays a big part in this book, setting the tone. Um, often there's a lot of times where there are no panels, so it's really the, the, the lettering that's really drawing your eye to the right spot, the right location, um, even how it's like depicting music. Uh, and as it gets into later in the book, how it actually does lettering on top of lettering to, there's, you know, there's words said, but then above those words, or an additional layer of tax that kind of emphasize it that this show more the supernatural element, which I thought was an interesting way of, of approaching it. Um, so you get the sequences where it ends up being all black because part of it, as it says in the title, uh, come again is people get lost in these underground tunnels um, and a child goes missing. I don't want to give more away than that because I feel like part of the discovery of this book is kind of going the, the process that I went through where you're kind of thinking it is this more dramatic tale and then it shifts gradually more and more. Uh, and um, I thought Nate Powell kind of did a smart move in the sense of not trying to replicate a type of story that he you know benefited from. This is nothing like March. This is, his style doesn't seem at all similar. It does have that emotional resonance that we, we had in March, even though it's based upon a completely fictional tale. Um, and genreize is completely different. It did kind of remind me a little bit of like a, a 70s era uh, genre film that was not a, not really gory, but had had like that t type of atmosphere and tone to it where the, the 
ghost, like a Rosemary's Baby or something of that nature, where you don't most most of it is based upon what you don't see, uh, and that that occurs in here. It's not necessarily a book I think that is designed to elicit scares or be um, uh, be hor horrific in that sense, but it does use that element to more so punctuate the emotion of the book. And so I thought that was an effective use of it. So I ended up turning around in the book at halfway through. I'm like, I don't know if I want to keep going with this. It's just not, it's not clicking with me, but by the end it, it, it ended up dead. So if you're, if you're reading this um, and you're not liking it at first, maybe go through, maybe you won't like it by the end as much as I did, but I would highly advise picking it up. Um, and if you, if you really enjoyed March, just be warned that it's nothing like that story-wise. So uh, if you're going in thinking, oh, this is gonna be just a similar type of story just done differently, no, that's not the case. Uh, the next book I'm gonna talk about is Gumballs. This is uh, done by Aaron Nations, a very different type of story. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, kind of a, it, it's about Aaron uh, and his transition from being a woman to a man and kind of what he what uh, he went through through that process from kind of beginning to, to current but it's much more than that there's a lot of observational comedy in this as well about life uh, one through his perspective and the way we people treat him the awkwardness that he's he's uh, he's working with uh, this the challenges of kind of uh, trying to fit your life into uh, what are not no so normal social norms and the way people act around you but there's also a lot of these uh, specific uh, personal ads and you can't really read them here uh, but are some of the best parts where these personal ads throughout the book which are you know like I tinder ass type of things where you see this person and, and they give you his story um and like his profile about how like who the person is and what they're into and there's such a level of authenticity to these i'm like did he just take these from online just the, the level of detail um and uh, creativity within them was really impressive and um he has a very sharp eye like a really uh, uh, like a smart observational comic that's able to kind of look at the world around us and perceive it in a way that we don't, but then take that perception and translate it onto the page where you can kind of see life differently based upon the perspective of this person, but also um, ha have some sort of universal aspect where you're like, oh, okay, I can relate to that, even though it's not something I w went through, or at least appreciate the way it's on the page and kind of better understand kind of the what you don't know or what you can't relate to um, and so i will say the one thing that's a little that, that i had a somewhat issue is there's a lot of these non-sequitur humor jokes that are tossed when through and not just these pr uh, profiles but you get a little bit of his story and then it kind of cuts to something else or another joke you get like something like this which is which is like this you know joke about a cat and um and it somewhat ties into what's happening some what, what doesn't but it's very segmented in that where it's not all the way through like here's part of the story and we're gonna read this entire um kind of uh, depiction of, of, of the life of, of the off the author it, it goes back and forth and it does at least keep your attention i, I know we're the, the millennial generation where we think things fast and quick and if something doesn't change instantaneously maybe the interest will go away and it, it, it felt like that in a way where like they didn't want to say anything for too long to kind of just distract, distract you like oh people might getting might be getting bored let me throw some cats in there but it was always consistently funny and and clever and honest as well so um I, my my one uh, quibble but overall was quite quite a good book um i ended up really enjoying this it's very funny like I, it's hard for me to laugh out loud um to, to actual comic books, but this was the case where it happened here. And it, it does get pretty brutally honest at, at the end 10 too. There's, it, it's not necessarily, um, you know, all, all good times as well. Um, so I would definitely advise picking this up. Um, and I think I read another book this year as well as like my, my transition story or something like that. Um, very different, um, similar subject matter. And I think I felt like this one just had more to it uh, because of everything it was able to absorb and, and, and discuss. And I thought the, the writing was a little stronger. Um, speaking of strong writing, we have A Study in Emerald. And uh, this is a book where it's like a cavalcade of people doing what they really, what they are known for and doing it well. Um, this is written by Neil Gaiman with art by uh, Raphael Al Al Albuquerque. And, uh, you know who's I think right now doing the Magic Order series, and it's a book about uh, Sherlock Holmes, 
but with a more supernatural twist. It's like taking Sherlock Holmes and Lovecraft and combining them into one story, uh, and it's written by Neil Gaiman. So I feel like you hear that description and you know exactly what this book is, and that's exactly what this book is. It's not uh, here to subvert expectations in that sense. If you're a Neil Gaiman fan, uh, I think this will certainly satisfy Neil Gaiman fans. It, you know, if you love Sandman, it's, I don't think it's as necessarily as deep or as um, layered as a Sandman story. You know, it's eventually just Sherlock Holmes trying to solve this mystery. But I think what this, it's a, it's a, a recipe just ends up working. Uh, Ravi Albuquerque's art is fantastic. It fits the setting really well. Uh, um, it, which is no surprise and. Neil Gaiman knows how to write, so I would, you know, if you're a person that likes people to stretch what they are doing, it's not necessarily uh, that uh, that that's what's happening here. But um, what ends up happening? There's some murders that are occurring, and Sherlock Holmes is trying to investigate them. But this is a Sherlock Holmes, as you can see the the green blood there, taking off the studying emerald idea. Uh, if you know anything about Sherlock, uh, Sherlock Holmes is written as as you would expect him to be. Uh, he, he, you know, he. If you saw any of the films or the previous, you know, in iterations of him, it's just that Sherlock Holmes. It's not taking him in any typ typ typical different direction. It's, I think his purpose of this is just taking that type of personality that per that uh, we know and this placing him into more of the supernatural setting. Um, so it's quite good. I ended up really enjoying this. I could see this being considering the pedigree that's in this book. It's also a really quick read. It's rather thin. It's more of a extended um, comic in a way. I think it's only like, I don't know how many pages it's through Dark Horse, but you can really read this in uh, one setting relatively quickly because even in the back, there's a bunch of sketches and things like that. So it's, um, and this is, I think Neil Gaiman does, a, I've been doing a lot of these for comics where he's not ri writing continuous stories or anything like Sandman, but he'll write something like this here and there. I think there are some other writers as well. Uh, Dave Stewart doing the uh, doing the colors, um, and which also obviously play a big part in this because, you know, the study of Emerald, the use of that green is punctuated throughout. So um, if this at all sounds interesting to you, I pretty much, I think, people who are into this, into Neil Kamen, are going to be very happy with what uh, this puts out. Um, so that, that one's one of those books where it is what it is type of situation, so it's not really much more to say in my opinion. Uh, lastly, I think this is probably the book I ended up enjoying the most out of all the books I talked about today with Idle Days. Um, partially because I went into this with no expectations. Some of the books I talked about, like Nate Powell, I had past experience with, really enjoyed his stuff. Neil Gaiman obviously comes with a pedigree. This is one I just kind of picked up knowing nothing about it, but this is a story about a man who uh, deserted the army um, in during World War II. Um, and he's hiding out in Canada with uh, family members uh, as the war is raging so he doesn't end up getting arrested. And he's living in this rural uh, Canadian town, um, you know, in this house uh, with his grandfather um, that does all these weird things. And it, the thing that kind of reminded me the most of is something like Shining, dealing with isolationism and having this, this building of supernatural elements that keep kind of coming up more and more and more until the eventual boil. Um, you know, there's a lot, the imagery in this obviously reminded me that uh, of that as well. A lot of the surreal horror imagery uh, and th where there's, you know, <laughs> we were not, where you, you, you don't know if the person's just going crazy because he's feeling all this guilt from, you know, he's listening to the radio and hearing what's going on, learning about D-Day, learning about all these people dying. Um, you find out like, other things that kind of led up to him deserting the war and why that may have happened. It's a person that's dealing with a lot of those issues um, on top of the fact that he's living in this rather mysterious place where some things have gone down in the past. It was previously used by the mob or at least a crime S family during Prohibition um, and questions wondering if there's more to it than just that. So uh, trying to find a, a good page to share that doesn't necessarily spoil anything but I just I just found it really well told. Uh, it uses a lot of small panels, so it moves very fast. Um, not a huge amount of dialogue. It's uh, as you, you would expect. We're dealing with just mainly one person or a, a very limited scope of people. And I, I just thought it was really the the colors of it. I thought were effective, almost like charcoal esque. Um, to set that mood. So 
I would highly advise kind of picking this up. This is what I was trying to get to. You get some of the surreal imagery. I think it's an aesthetic that may not work for everyone because it is a little rough and it is a little sketchy um, in, in a way, but I thought con considering the story it was telling, uh, I, I only think that it didn't completely work for me. I thought, you know, it was waiting for this crescendo to kind of hit by the end of it, and it doesn't necessarily get there completely. Um, I thought the, you know, the journey was fantastic, but uh, the final destination, was okay. It what didn't end, I think, on a strong note. But uh, just seeing this man dealing with just the grief of things that have happened to him in the past recently, the guilt of knowing that his fellow friends and countrymen are, you know, basically being slaughtered in, in this war that's always in the background. Knowing that at any moment in time, um, if he ever goes in the town, someone sees him, there are signs up saying, you know, if you see deserters, call this number. That he could be thrown in jail for any period of time. He's just kind of waiting. And when you're, when you have that, when you're just waiting for the, you know, the world to move by, uh, and you're kind of stuck in a situation where you have no place to go, uh, what, what ends up happening and you kind of see that here. So, um, again, it goes into the uh, title of idle days, but so if that at all, at all interests you advise picking it up. Um, but yeah, that's it for this week for books, for graphic thoughts. Uh, thanks for listening to all my rambling about these books. I hopefully will have more of these out as I'm trying to cram in a bunch of graphic novels as we're gearing up for the end of, of 2018. Um, just because I usually start doing compiling my top 100 list around the end, mid of November, uh, because it takes some time to write and construct and make it up at, at this moment in time. So if there are books that you feel like are some fantastic books that aren't necessarily been talked about by me or in general, like obviously people talk about stuff like Mr. Miracle or some, uh, some of the, I haven't, there hasn't been a lot of graphic novels that have really hit big yet. Usually happens later in the year, but uh, anything smaller, especially like all age stuff or other type of stuff that I completely anime manga i picked up a bunch of manga stuff that i'm trying to get into and every time i do it just like it doesn't doesn't work for me i'm trying i'm trying hard uh, but we'll see all right well just remember comics are for everyone the key is finding the right one until next time thank you so much for watching